think. Um, yeah, so my name is Josh Pringle. I'm an illustrator and artist from Hobart. Um, I do this sort of stuff, so recent commissions have been some uh, stickers, Instagram stickers for Blunston, some uh, beer cans for Moobra and the band Blue Cabrazi. And I do a lot of sort of band t-shirts and uh, some logos and other stuff. But the thing that uh, people most know me for now is Keith Tazzy Wild. So Keith Tazzy Wild is a... Business I run with my wife, and so essentially the idea is to uh, yeah, donate money to charity. And so I'm going to talk about the art I make, why I make it, and how Keep Tessie Wild um, sort of came out of that art. <laughs> <laughs> so I've essentially been drawing uh, since I could pick up a pencil. Here's an awesome uh, mobile I drew back in the day, and I still think I haven't made art as good as I used to. Um, there's me drawing with my dad, and my dad's a decorative blacksmith, and so he sort of um, forged the path, no pun intended, um, of you know, a creative life that I could make money from. So early on, big influences for me were comics, so Sergio Aragonia's Gru, and also um, Robert Crumb's stuff. And so, yeah, I loved that stuff, and it inspired me to make my own, uh, my own work. So I used to sell comics at my dad's shop in Salamanca for 10 cents, and that was the, the start of my, um, I guess, yeah, um, illustration career. Fast forward, I kept drawing through uh, primary school and college and just didn't stop a lot of people's creativity because that sort of gets beaten out of them, but I just kept going. So this is college where I was doing fairly graphic stuff, but also trying to get a little bit arty with my, um, my life drawing. And my influence came a lot from street art as well after comics. Um, yeah, and I started to try and push that. After a little bit of a break, I went to um, art school in 2010 and I was drawing just kind of what I did, which was drinking. I drew lots of dicks, I drew beer bottles, <laughs> just stupid shit. But what was really great about art school, and Mary Scott, a teacher in particular, was she, they were kind of talking about concept, I was like, oh, I don't know. And she said, no, look, you're dealing with ideas of rites of passage, masculinity, um, coming of age. And so once she told me that, I realised, oh, I don't need to say, oh, I'm going to make art about this. It's just that I was inherently making art about um, what I was thinking about. And so this is some printmaking I did, and I slowly saw my art began to mature um, as I went through those years. Then I stumbled across sculpture and I really loved the way that I could turn my illustrations into 3D works and create these worlds, but also and um, put my illustrations on 3D things. And so this is an exhibition I had at art school in 2014 and this is still probably some of the favourite work I've done. I don't get to make much art anymore and so it's nice to be at art school doing that. At this same time, I started to bushwalk a little bit more, I started to learn the name of plants on the mountain and um, and this botanical element started into, entering into my art and so uh, this is another exhibition I had and there's kind of maps from the bushwalks I was doing and this botanical element. So they're fictional plants, I just made them up but they were based on the real plants I was seeing. This is my final work for um, art school and so that looks massive, this big monolith but the original was only about a foot high and that's printed on a big inject printer. Um, and so you can see there those ideas of masculinity, coming of age, that kind of stuff, but also the botanical elements with the Waratah and the mountain rocket in there. Uh, around this time, I started getting more worried about uh, the kind of private development coming into national parks, and so I created these images, just drew this up, and I made posters to put around art school in town and on Instagram. I had a little bit of an Instagram following, and so I just thought, oh, the first thing I can do is kind of create awareness and see um, if that doesn't thing doesn't do that much, especially just some posters around art school, so I thought I should make some money. So I decided to uh, make some patches. These include the Tasmanian Waratah, which is an endemic species. And um, yeah, and I thought I want to donate 50% of the profit based on the who gives a crap toilet paper, really, but also the idea that we shouldn't donate everything if we're an artist. We should try to make a living for ourselves as well. So that started in 2016. Since then, we've donated over $30,000. Um, and in my day, um, never thought it was going to be that big, it was always just meant to be this side project, but now it sort of takes up um, probably the majority of my time. Um, so the way we make our money, I say we, it's me and my wife, uh, and I just say we, so it just feels wrong to say I. Anyway, when my wife wasn't involved, um, I sell online at keeptazzywild.com, and then we also have stockists, about 15 stockists around uh, Tasmania, and that's um, cafes, camp shops, other places, homeware stop, shops. So this is a bunch of the stuff. So I've illustrated all this and up at, up the top are our stickers and they're printed in Moona. And then we have our patches that are made in Mount Dromedary, just up near Bridgewater. And uh, we've got some enamel pins, they're made in Moona. And then also our t-shirts, they're printed in Melbourne and made in 
Bangladesh and China or something, but they're free, um, you know, fair trade. Uh, the idea, we don't have much of a plan. Uh, I sort of think of it in a way that when it finishes, how do I want to look back? I want to have um, made lots of, uh, donated lots of money. I want to have a series of patches that I can look back at the way we look back at 70s patches and kind of go, oh, they're cool. A little bit of nostalgia. And then also I want to educate and inspire people. And I think the education and inspiring people is the, has the most scope for growth. I'm the most excited about that. Um, I just got to figure out how to do it. So this is the actual Waratah in the wild up on Kanani, and that's the patch on a, um, on a bag. <laughs> so this is just a little bit of a snapshot of the process. So I start with uh, generally a pencil sketch or just drawing um, on a Wacom tablet, play around with layout, uh, finally get to the colours, and then I have to look at a, a kind of all the fabrics that you can use in patches, which is really hard to figure out the actual colours, so I just take a punt and get five um, tests and see how it goes. Uh, I always say to myself, a little mantra is walk, don't run. Walk the business, don't run the business. I don't want to get stressed. I don't want to get burnt out. Early on I did, I thought I had to save the world. And two weeks in, I was like, oh, fuck this. And so um, I just think it's really important to sort of, you know, just walk there. I don't have to, I don't have to post Instagram stuff every week. I don't have to do whatever. I thought I'd finish with this. I was going to start with it, but I don't know. Anyway, hopefully I'll be as cool as I thought I was. Um, <laughs> That's me. Thank you.